So this review is on the uh, publication of the book Single Model Number no. 2 from Rinaldi's Studio Press and it's written by Michael Rinaldi. Um, so this is uh, so this is the second book in this series. Um, they only get uh, do one print run, so basically once they're gone, they're gone. Um, and it loosely follows on from his previous four books, the Tankart series 1 through 4, of which uh, edition 3 of Tankart 1 is um, is coming soon, and I think you can actually get it on uh, on special on his website. Not too sure if it's reduced yet, but single model number 3 is definitely um, uh, on a pre-order special on the website right now. So, um, how does this work? So SM stands for single model. Um, basically, he just uh, works with one, I'd say one model, and this one, he kind of cheats a little bit and has uh, two kits of the same model, the, uh, the S65 uh, tractor. Um, f uh, I think one was he bought it off eBay and just sort of used that as a test piece to try some stuff out. And then the second one um, was built and uh, gone to town on, basically. So let's go through these. And uh, SM02 sort of loosely follows the same format as 01 other than that. The paper is uh, a semi-glossy, a little different to the paper from the first book in this series. There's the table of contents. And I'll just hold this up so you can hopefully have a have a, a look at it. And from that, the main thing to notice is the W's and the, a, and the H's. As when it goes through something, it's not, uh, it's not just a case of um, here's how you do this thing. There's also an explanation of why you need to do that. So it's in you know, a lot of kids, they'll say, uh, or a lot of books, they'll just say, okay, so you want to do this? This is how you do it. And in these books, what I like is the fact that they, he explains why you might want to do something. And what he says, there's a very artistic lean to these, uh, to Michael's publications. Um, which I find is really good. It sort of gets you out of the uh, almost paint by numbers sort of thing, and it gets you to sort of think for yourself and work out why you need to do something or what is missing from places. So let's go through. We start off with an introduction. Um, and it's, it first mentions the Windex removal technique, which is new for new for this book. Uh, paint schemes, color schemes, uh, tools of the trade here. Here's your first, your first W, Y, tools of the trade. Uh, philosophy behind my thing. Here's the first image of the two finished kits, by the way. Um, basically explaining some of the, uh, some of the fundamentals behind things. Hairspray technique is what Michael uses a lot for uh, chipping and paint removal over the, t over, the uh, over the top of the other coats of paint. And then yeah, obviously put in the hairspray beneath, between two coats of paint, so you remove the top one to reveal the one underneath. Um, and you can also have three layers of paint with hairspray in between all of them. And um, obviously you build up the layers and uh, remove each top layer and then spray again and add a layer on top of that one. Um, so, a complete go through the hairspray technique, how to do that. Uh, think about um, basically getting good at stuff like anything, it comes down to practicing and testing. You try something out, try it again, try it again. Um, uh, we've all had that before where something didn't work as advertised, so you just strip the paint off or take it to pieces and try it again. Um, just testing. Here he is. He's, this is on the first kit that he's uh, basically using the first kit as a test subject to sort of gather some ideas together. And we start off with rust layers, with, uh, the other layers going on the top. And here's the introduction to the Windex, uh, using Windex. 
it takes the paint off slightly differently to the hairspray um, technique. And it's not just a neat Windex, otherwise you might as well just strip the paint off and be done with it. And it's watered down Windex and you know it's part of the sort of trying it out. Um, I think for this one Michael had not used the Windex technique much at all, so the, very much the first um, kit he was painting was very much sort of try it out, get the dilution of the Windex right, use the, the right amount of um, uh, scrubbing with a brush to take the paint off and generally working it out. When you come down you can see how the bare rust is being starting to be revealed underneath. And now there's browns going on the top and then a light blue goes on the top and more paints, more, uh, more weathering, more paint removal. And here we can see uh, pigments being added to the to the tracks, and he explains how he does that. Um, it's pretty straightforward technique, really, nothing too complicated. Um, uh, adding drying pigments, now adding pigments to the tracks, and generally coming to the end. And there's the finished product, I think. And now we get on to oil paint rendering. Oil paint rendering basically replaces all the, does it, does everything from sort of washes, um, filters, all that sort of stuff. I'm basically just using oil paints and thinner to replicate pretty much everything else. Um, so all you need is, yeah, a bunch of oil paints, squishes, and some oil paint thinner on a piece of cardboard. To wick away the linseed oil at the uh, at the oil paints. And off you go. Now he talks you through the through oil paint rendering and how he does that and what you can achieve with it. And it seems quite well as you can see here. You can do pretty much anything you want to really. And it's probably not a lot cheaper than buying a whole pile of bottles of uh, um, oils and enamels from people and all the different weathering products. So now I come down and just going through all that. And as you can see, we've got a really good uh, result. Now we're starting on the second identical kit. Puts together. Um, you know, some good things to say. This is the uh, trumpet kit, S65. It goes together pretty well. So there's a short piece on getting it all together. How the tracks go together. And then that's it. The same old. Now we're on to painting. Um, and you see the end result of the, the, the two different tractors when they're finished. Here's the paints used. Reference photographs. Um, basically has a habit of walking around taking photographs of real life weathering with his cell phone as he's wandering around Portland or wherever to see what stuff looks like in real life so you can replicate it if it doesn't if what you're doing doesn't look like real life then it's not going to look realistic. And here's some more photographs of um, similar sort of effect to what he's after replicating. Now come down to uh, primers um, basically uses the Mr. Paint primer this time. Um, yeah, I remember Michael always uses primers. And then uh, start putting the paints on and putting the hairspray on, um, adding different layers, different colours, and then start, uh, start off with the Windex technique and wearing the top layers away to reveal the um, darker layers underneath. Uh, see talking through that with images. As you can see, Bob, hopefully see all the images are pretty good, pretty clear. They've all got these little circles on, so if he's talking about something in the text, the little circles point in the right direction. As you can see, W's at the bottom starting each paragraph because so those are Y's. Uh, how? Without applying decals here. Um, 
This is, the good thing about this book is it's uh, everything is pretty clear, pretty straightforward. Makes it look makes it look easy, but explains what it is that makes it look easy. Um, and the biggie is practicing. So we'll come on, add more weathering. Back to oil paint windowing again. And you know, it goes into things like um, why certain colours were chosen, why some things were done, what you know, how to add interest to something rather than just painting something a solid colour and just chipping away. Why some bits might be chipped more than others, why some things might be more faded than others. And coming through again, adding more pigments again, uh, more, more content rendering, more weathering. And then coming through, colors used. Making sure that uh, talking about asymmetrical balance, basically the two sides of the tractor need to look different. You don't see tractors in real life with identical chipping and paint schemes on both sides. Well, paint chipping schemes. Now talking about the tracks and how those were done. And then more oil paints, the pencil, and how the seat was done. There's a, quite a few layers on there, more hairspray on that, and more oil paints on there, oil paint rendering to get it looking just right. Now, uh, headlights, I'm making those look right again, how those were done, adding some extra details like uh, the tow rope, which wasn't part of the kit. Um, you can see some of the final details. At the end, there's a the gallery of the Final kit, the comparison of, of the two in places. Listen, it's a good photograph of what we finished off with. And that's the end here. There's a quick reference step by step of what was done in each step. So if you want to sort of follow the same sequence of steps, you can just quick, you can refer to this one to see. Okay, what's what do I do next? And follow the same sequence for something you're doing. And then we get to the end. And we're at the end here with 127 pages. Um, so overall, these are nice books. As you can see, they're sort of what half letter size, half A4 size. Um, they're pretty good. They'll sit on the bench at the side just to use as a reference for things. There's lots of details in there, lots of ideas. Like I said, it's more than just a um, this is how to do it book. It's also a this is why you might want to do it book. And when you're doing something, these are the other things to consider that will make your uh, make your model stand out from the rest. Um, like I said, it has a, a, a more artistic feel to it. It's sort of trying to explain why you would want to do things uh, this way. And the techniques are pretty straightforward and pretty simple, cost effective. I mean, there's hairspray, there's Windex, there's oil paints, and there's standard paints. And with that, you've pretty much got everything you need. There's nothing spectacularly uh, expensive, complicated or difficult in here. The key is um, thinking and practicing and that's it. So if you haven't got uh, one of these books, I think they're on sale right now. The number three is on sale right now for, for $20. Uh, it'll go up to $25, uh, which is the cost of the two and the one. Um, when they, uh, uh, sorry, they're the number three will go up to $25 when it's published. Shipping is just five dollars in North America. Um, so yeah, so get yourself one and have a look, see, see what you think. And I'll take some photographs and stick them on the website on modelbuilderinternational.com, and I'll add a few words as well and a link to uh, Michael's website.